In today's video, we are gonna talk about audio upgrades for the Evolution Golf Cart D5. Now, I don't have a fully completed tutorial yet on what I would recommend, which should be coming maybe next week uh, or maybe even by the weekend, but I wanted to share some of the progress of what I have been working through and why it's taking a little bit longer. So yeah, if you really just wanted to tap into your stock head units, line in and line out, that's not a big uh, project. You know, generally that might be one of the solutions that we build in the video is how to uh, build a plug and play connector for these audio lines here. One is power, one contains your audio, have a nice little RCA out uh, line on it and you can wire it into an amplifier, uh, which you might wanna locate underneath your seat. That said, I'm trying to build a more holistic approach to an audio system upgrade. Everybody wants something a little bit different, but what works and what doesn't work and what to replace and what not to replace. These head units don't really have the greatest sound quality. Um, they have kind of low quality Bluetooth adapters. And so you can spend all this money upgrading your stereo system, but we're all routing the audio still through these really cheap head units. So I'm trying to take a look at potentially replacing the head unit with an amplifier like this that has uh, Bluetooth direct inside of it um, and see if that improves the sound quality more. I'm looking at different speaker placements and sizes. Should we actually use these front holes with what size speakers? Do we need adapters? Can we get the LEDs to work? Where should you store the amplifier? How do you best get power for your amplifier? What should you do with your stock soundbar? So I actually ended up cracking this soundbar open because I really wanted to be confident on the wiring diagrams that I've been breaking down. Um, here's a sample of the pigtail that goes up to the soundbar. And so what I've done is I've spliced into it with a range of alligator connectors, also allowing me to read um, the serial communication that's going back and forth between the head unit. So the head unit uh, lets you specify the volume, volume up, volume down, and that is communicated on serial across to the soundbar as well as our soundbar LED colors. When I'm choosing red, blue, green, um, those are being communicated on by serial. And so if we're gonna do a replacement, a lot of people kind of really like that. Oh, you can change the color of your LEDs. Could we incorporate that uh, stock system into other LEDs on the cart or could we even maintain it? So that is something that I'm also exploring. Uh, the stock soundbar, when you crack it open, it's interesting. Uh, it reveals that you have two 20 watt speakers. So on either side, these two here are 20 watt speakers, as well as these tiny ones across the top. You can see the board on the back um, is designed. It does, this one does have stereo sound. So mine shares a common uh, speaker negative, but it also has a left and a right feed and then you have your data feed for the serial communication for the LED colors. So a lot of these uh, blue and green lines are going to the LEDs and the various LED colors, but this is what's going inside on inside the sound bar. You'll notice that the sound bar hisses when the cart starts up. So when you turn on your cart, where this hiss is coming from, in my opinion, and if, if you guys have a different idea, let me know, but what happens is the sound bar receives voltage almost instantly. So you hit power, um, your inverter turns on underneath the seat. It starts sending 12 volts up to the sound bar. The sound bar speakers then have a floating ground it, and that is picking up um, a lot of noise from the electronics. And the sound bar doesn't kick in or ground those speaker grounds until it receives its first serial communication along the serial communication lines. So it is waiting for your head unit to turn on, get on, and after the Evolution logo, it finally sends it, oh, volume and LED colors. And until the head unit finishes um, doing that and sends it some serial communication, it's just making this high frequency humming noise, picking up a ton of interference. So that's also something that I'm debating. You know, it would be nice to kind of eliminate some of that boot up noise hum, especially as you get better speakers and things going on. So 
I'm looking at a couple options with the soundbar, attempting to preserve the soundbar along with auxiliary speakers, other options where we potentially replace it, also considering options where we bypass the built-in amplifier board. Uh, we use it for the LEDs, but potentially bypass it for speakers to go direct. So there's a few different options uh, that I'm putting together for a video that we have coming up. Um, I'll show you another video a little bit about the serial communication because I was excited to finally hack into that. Um, this is the same WaveShare adapter that we use for programming in our programming video. So if you haven't seen our video on how to build your own uh, controller programming tool, this same WaveShare USB adapter, I was able to put in RS485 mode and now use it to listen to and sniff the data communication between the soundbar. So uh, that's been working and I was glad to unlock that. I might put in a little bit of that video here uh, about how the communication actually works. What we're doing here is I'm using real term to listen to the uh, data that's flowing through across uh, this serial communication. Uh, right now we're looking at a hex output and we are limiting it to 26 columns. And what I've noticed is you can actually see the different uh, changes here in the hex data. So this is good because, you know, what I wanted to do is potentially build uh, software so that I could listen to what you selected on the dash here and actually make changes to auxiliary lighting. So if you had underglow or other things like that and you wanted them to match that same color, we could tap into this label. So I'm gonna hit the sound bar here. Just one, two, three. I'm gonna go into yellow now. And what you will notice is this digit right here under my mouse. I'm on the fourth sound bar color right now. So I'm gonna hit it again. It's gone blue. Now it's at five. I'm gonna hit it again. It's at pur six is purple. Hit it to the cool one, that's uh, seven, let's do it again. Green with the music and off goes to zero. So as you can see there, we this digit is the soundbar front colors. If I push and hold it and switch it to the back soundbar, we can see when I switch the back soundbar, we end up changing this digit here as we cycle through the colors. Um, but yeah, uh, so we're waiting on some more parts to arrive, but it will be really easy to build a nice plug and play harness with RCA ends on it. Uh, but I wanted to have the video come with a few more recommendations and be able to show you the pre and post and some of the things that I recommend. So, so when it comes to looking at audio more holistically on the cart, I'm also looking at making sure we're able to incorporate volume on the steering wheel in whatever it is that we put into the cart because it is really nice to be able to change it or switch tracks right from the steering wheel. Uh, I've also been looking at since my had a bit of a fail in adapting CarPlay into the existing stock head unit, I'm looking at some other like kind of unique devices like this external CarPlay unit uh, going here and building a nice mount that flush mounts it into the dash as well for CarPlay. So the overall goal would be upgraded audio, external CarPlay unit, controllable volume, and a higher quality and hum-free rear soundbar. So that's why it's taking a little bit of time to put together everything, uh, but hopefully we have some stuff for you soon. Um, definitely subscribe and I hope to have some more audio videos out soon.